We're here with Ryan Vargas, fresh off the top 15 run at Pocono. So close to that top 10, man. But, uh, man, congrats. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you know, the JD guys, they put, to they put together a great piece. My crew chief, Mark Setzer, gave me an awesome cranial care bear. His face is Chevy. It was, it was a really unique experience going to uh, Pocono. No practice, no laps, and just jumping in the car. It was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I know you, you said you were kind of disappointed, but yet happy at the same time of not being able to get that top 10. I, I know you celebrated with some chicken nuggets afterwards, but uh, how hungry are you to keep going after that? You know, you left stuff on the table and you know that. Yeah, you know, I'm ready to just be back in the race car. It's, uh, it was a really awesome race we had at Pocono. The car was fast going into these races. We could definitely improve and build upon what we, what we laid out at Pocono. You know, a lot of people... I even myself didn't really think that we would perform we would perform as well as we did. Um, we you know we just dropped to the back, tried to stay out of the mess and messes, I should say. And uh, even before all that chaos really happened, we were you know a top twelve car. And uh, I think you know even if you know if some of that chaos didn't happen, we still would have probably had about the same result. So you know just got to make up some mistakes, got to be more aggressive. Just little things there that I'm going to really be hard on myself about. I see you're, you got a cool background in uh, JD's office right there. Outside of being a driver, what are your roles at JD Motorsports? Yeah, so, you know, recently I've just been doing some stuff on the road crew side with the team, uh, really just learning how the team dynamic is. And it's been a really unique opportunity. I've actually been working with uh, the Zero team uh, with Case and Jeffrey and uh, just really learning off those guys, you know, learning the dynamic of, you know, being on a team, working with the crew. And I think when I got back in the car, it, it helped me learn a lot more of, it helped me gain a big respect as to what goes into everything. And I felt a lot more confidence going into a race because I knew now that I had worked with these guys and been more hands-on, they'll want to put in a hundred percent effort for me as well. And it just kind of goes full circle and I'll put in a hundred percent effort with these guys. And, you know, like we said, I hope they, I hope it kind of works together. It's, it's, a, it's a unique dynamic there. Uh, I love the, the race car driver mentality. Uh, you, you know, I know you're a guy who works hard to, to make your craft the best you can do. I, I couldn't help but I have to bring up a tweet you mentioned last night of kind of overthinking things and, and feeling like you can't go out and enjoy yourself. What, what's the race car mentality, you know, behind that? Yeah, it's tough. You know, for me, I haven't had a lot of opportunity to, you know, do my own thing, kind of relax, go out with friends, you know, this, the mentality of I need this done today, do X, X, X things. And it's, it means, um, you know, every racer, you know, you're constantly on that search for the next thing, the next deal. And it's, it's really hard. And to have opportunities like I have presented to me at JD, it's, it's really awesome. I have an absolute blast. And uh, my goal, you know, obviously is not only to become a better racer, but a better businessman, a better person, and just a better crew, crew guy as well. Yeah, you mentioned the businessman side. You've built up a pretty good brand for yourself. And I know that's kind of the, the thing as a young driver, you have to build your face and, and show who you represent in the sport. How hard has it been and, and how fun has it been trying to build that brand? It's been fun. Um, you know, I'm really glad that the fans have taken to it. Um, you know, with the whole Rhino Gang brand and the Nuggy reviews and everything that just kind of goes on with it. You know, I say all the time, my brand is based on race cars and memes and it <laughs> kind of works. And uh, I've had a really good time just kind of being able to connect with the fans and, you know, kind of play on the fact that, hey, you know, I'm, I'm a race car driver and I'm able to, but I'm still a fan. I'm still one of you guys. Like if I go to like, I was debating on get, you know, getting a ticket to go to the all-star race just because I want to go. Like, I, I'm a fan at heart. I start off as a fan, and this is only eight years ago that I was just a fan. And now I'm at this position where I'm very fortunate to be able to pursue that dream of being a race car driver. So it's, it's something that I never want to lose grasp of. Um, and I still want to be that, that guy that the fans will come up to and want to have a conversation with. I saw the, the Rhino gang t-shirts. You sent me some of them. They look so cool. Were you happy with how those turned out? Yeah, no. Uh, Emily, Emily Butler and uh, Harris Lou, they both did a phenomenal job putting that stuff together. Um, two very talented and creative artists. And they, 
the shirts came out really good. I told them, you know, I want this to be something that someone who's not even a racing fan would want to wear. And uh, it's it, they've done a really good job with it. And I'm very, very happy to see the fans really take part of it as well. Let's talk a little racing. I, I feel like I always learn something new on Twitter every single day. And, and that comes with driver opinions, too. Everyone seems excited about the Choose Cone but I found that you weren't the biggest fan of it growing up racing. So what was it about the choose cone that you didn't quite like? I just didn't like it, you know, cause for me, it's just another, and growing up, it was another thing that just compiled on top of like trying to, you know, keep track position and work on your race car. It's a really cool thing for the entertainment side, but as a, the racer in me didn't like it. However, you know, I've always been open to change. And so I'm excited to see how it works in the All-Star Race. I think it is a perfect short track-esque thing. I grew up using it at Orange Show Speedway and stuff like that. So it'll be neat. I'm really excited to see how it works. Um, and, you know, it'll be, it'll be, it'll make for a really good show. I know that. After your great run at Pocono, you announced to the fans that you're going to be racing again in Kansas. How excited are you to hit back, get back on the racetrack? And, and how do you prepare for that kind of race? So yeah, no, I'm really excited about Kansas. It's my first mile and a half. It's kind of funny. My I'd never been on a mile and a half before Pocono. I did Pocono and I'm going back to doing a mile and a half. So it's going to be really interesting. Um, I love the track groove. You could run the fence, run the bottom. And uh, I'm really excited to get back after it. I love the way these Xfinity cars drive. And I know with, you know, working with Mark Setzer again, he's going to bring me a good piece and hopefully be able to one up our performance at Pocono. Well, Ryan, I appreciate it. Best of luck to you at Kansas, and uh, thanks for taking the time, man. Dude, thank you. I appreciate you having me on, and uh, have a good one.